Hi friends! Hey guys, how are you? In today's video we have a little bit of a different video for you. We've been wanting to make it for a little while, so we're excited to finally be putting it out there for everyone who's been curious. Well, if you don't know us, I'm Maria Jose. And I'm Chase. And we live in a converted school bus. This guy right here. We have been living in it for about a year. We're coming up very quickly on full time for a year. The cool thing about it is that we try to make it as comfortable as possible, make it our home in a pretty good budget, I will say. We're not cheap, but we're very cost conscious. So part of our mission along this entire journey was to branch out, do something different, do something unique, but do it in a way that it's affordable and it's very easily accessible for anyone to, to do as well. Mm -hmm. So in today's video, we're gonna bring it all out. We put the receipts together and we have a cost break down. We've been storing up all the receipts from our build. I know we had mentioned before that this thing cost $16,000 or less, including the cost of the bus. And we're gonna show you exactly how. Are you ready for it? Hola amigos, we are Maria Jose and Chase. In 2018, we saw our home and moved into a 40-foot school bus with our dogs Jake and Pablo. In an effort to live our lives deliberately, we hit the road. Since then, we've met the most amazing people, and we've made friends for life. Push the limits of our comfort zones, learn new skills. Explored the unknown, and witnessed the most amazing sunsets. We invite you to subscribe and join us along this journey. To start our wild adventure in the bus, we go all the way back to February 2018 on her birthday. I found out I was losing my job. We had to sit on a company-wide call. Um, it was a corporate restructure. Probably a few thousand people were displaced from the very beginning down. We have an entire video where I explain this. My father had been showing us school bus conversions for, I don't know, a few weeks, few months, something of that sort. And Marioze and I were like, cool idea. Super cool. Cuckoo. Anyone like, who wants to live in a bus is weird. Yeah, we will never be able to do that. No. As we started watching them, we started to become actually really intrigued and enamored by the quality of the builds mm -hmm. and how happy people yeah, seem doing it. The, yeah. the happiness factor, quality of life, mindset that you control your day from start to finish. Uh, that is, that's Priceless, cool. Yeah. yeah. We decided that we could probably do it. I went to work one day and I was like, I'm done. And I sent a text. I was like, let's buy a bus. So then two weeks later, after that text, we, we bought a bus. bus and that's when the craziness started happening well chase is great about like researching and getting involved like knowing what he's gonna do so he researched a lot of school buses yeah and that's when we found our school bus yeah and i had secretly bid on a couple of buses got outbid on them won the final bid but then the auction extended because it didn't meet a price point that they wanted and i was just getting tired of playing that game meanwhile from the day that she sent the text that said let's buy a bus i found one in the nashville area that probably will be one of your questions where you could find your bus and there's a lot of different places like auction places publicsurplus.com craigslist ebay and luckily for us, there was a family owned dealership just north of Nashville that had arrangements where they bought buses directly from Nashville public schools. That's something that you might want to consider. Look for buses where they haven't been in snow, crazy temperatures, there's not going to be rust, insane elevations up or down because that's a lot of strain on a drivetrain. And we find our perfect house. Yeah. How we said it before, Chase was let go from his work. We decided to take the severance and put it into a bus. Yeah, it was a defining moment for us. What are we gonna do now? Are we going to stay in the house that you know we we own and do all of that, or are we gonna you know change the course of the next you know few months to few years of our life? And clearly, we pick. <laughs> We picked the latter. When it came to a budget uh, for the bus and the entire build, we, we had parameters that we wanted to stay within. Trust us, and you probably know already, we've seen bus builds that cost fifty dollars to $100,000. We've seen van builds yeah. that cost fifty dollars to $100,000. And we were like, we cannot do that. No. But, but we were like, it's a school bus. It's, it's going to be moving. Things are going to break. We tried to keep it cost efficient. So our primary budget, including the cost of the bus, was $12,000. 
but when we put everything together, we managed to keep everything under $16,000. So we went over budget. But still, it's not as bad as $50,000. No, absolutely not. I would take my $16,000 bill over any of them. Yes. And with that being said, people often ask us how long it took to build our bus. And that's kind of a loaded question because there are a lot of things involved with that. Yes. So we'll try and break it down for you. It depends of if you have the time to build your bus. Like we were lucky enough that Chase was full time working in the bus. Very early morning to late at night. I will help after work or like on the weekends or when I was off. So most of everything was on him. So we started our bus build April 6th of 2018 and we finished our initial phase. We got it almost to where it is right now by August 28th. I was working full time on it from the second week of June because we took a family vacation. Mm -hmm. Um, so really full time from the second week of June to the end of August. And that's another thing that can change your budget. If you have the time or not, if you have the money to pay someone to do it for you, or if you're able to work full time on it. Yeah. Our build could have easily stretched out over the course of a year if we had been doing this along with working full time jobs. Yeah. Four months, give or take, and $16,000. I will tell you, neither of us had experience building, cutting, drilling, electrical, solar, none of that. For us, we utilized YouTube, yeah. this wonderful platform, uh, as family. much as possible. We did utilize family a ton as well. Uh, thankfully, her father and my father and my brother um, yeah. were all willing to help and did so at various stages in different capacities build, yeah. uh, throughout the entire build. After this little long intro, <laughs> let's start with the breakdown of the cost of the bus. Okay, let's start from the beginning. We found our school bus here in Nashville, Tennessee. We got it for 3,500. After tax and registration, ended being more like 3,800. Another question that a lot of people ask us is, do you need a special driver's license to drive your bus? And luckily here in Tennessee, you don't. So you can just drive your school bus with your regular driver's license. Of course, you need to kind of know what you're doing because it's totally different than a car. We actually are gonna link down below some resources for drive license depending on the state where you live at. At the beginning of our build, we didn't have a place to park the bus. The house where we used to live, we were not allowed to park it there. Chase's family had this space, but it was just like a big commitment for them. Luckily, we have their tools that we could work with. So if you don't have the tools, that, that might add some extra cost to your bill. We actually pay for six months in advance for a storage location to keep our bus. It was kind of close to Chase's parents' house. We pay $100 for it for like six months, which was a great deal. And we ended parking there for only one month. And then we decided to park at Chase's family house because they said we could. Some of the things that we did a little differently in our bus was in the form of dedicated spaces. So we used quite a bit more wood uh, building materials than galley style buses would be. And if you don't know what a galley style bus would be, that's where you walk in and there's a dedicated and specific path from the front of the bus all the way to the back of the bus. We used quite a bit more wood than most buses generally do or most bus builds generally do. And another thing that went into the overall cost and style of the build of our bus was how we intended to travel with it. Oftentimes you see people gut their bus entirely from floor to ceiling and do a bunch of what I would consider based on the way they travel unnecessary things. We insulated our walls with rigid foam board insulation. Our walls had insulation in them to begin with and our ceiling as well. Most buses do. While some is in much better condition and much better quality than others, uh, we did inspect several points along our bus uh, from floor to ceiling and we were perfectly okay with what we had found. The overall layout of our bus being a very wood intense build. So wood materials in the form of beadboard, um, one buys, two buys, all of those type of building materials, we ended up spending $1,275. That doesn't include the cost of our flooring. Our flooring was 250 bucks before taxes, so around $280 with taxes. And that we've mentioned before, that's something that you should dedicate more money to when it comes to your build. So we just went with a standard dollar per square foot uh, flooring, 
cheap laminate flooring from Lowe's and we would love to do it all over again. In regards to insulation, we spent around $87 on rigid foam board insulation for our walls. Um, and that again goes directly into the way that we intended to and do travel in our bus. With the exception of right now, um, we are in a very hot climate for the largest majority of the hot uh, temperatures of the year. But generally what we do is we follow um, mild to moderate temperatures. We've been extremely comfortable in the mid 80s um, in Arizona, and we've been extremely comfortable all the way down to the teens um, in Tennessee as well with uh, our heat source. That's something that will directly influence the overall cost of your build. You can easily add $500 to $1,500 in spray foam insulation. And um, anytime you remove uh, your walls or your uh, roof, then you're looking to add additional cost in uh, material there as well. We chose not to do that from a cost standpoint, also from the way that we travel and from aesthetics. We just don't like the wood roof. Another part of our money was curtains. This also works as an insulation because they're a thermal barrier. We got the material from Amazon. That's something else they can actually add to your build. We could have paid someone to make our curtains, but we decided to keep it low cost, buy a sewing machine and make the curtains. It took us around two days for it. The total cost of the material for the curtains was $80. I will 100% recommend them. They help to keep the heat out. If it's the summertime, we just like close them when there's like sun coming in or if it's cold if we have the wood stove on we just close them and keep the heat inside the bus another thing that we made ourselves was the sofa we had an old mattress that we caught and made it fit perfectly that way when you put together the sofa you have a queen size bed then we bought the materials to make the covers from Joann's that was around 450 they're amazing we bought zippers so you can just like take it out of the zipper and wash them if you need to that's great when you have dogs or kids that's something else that you can save a lot of money on how I mentioned it before luckily we were able to borrow Chase's family tools to work in the bus but we definitely spent some money in hardware and screws by this we mean hole saw sandpaper nails screws different things that we needed for the build the total cost of hardware and screws was 442 with 50 cents something like that a big portion of our money went to the kitchen area we got cabinets from lowe's that we totally will change if we could we would recommend for you to build it yourself because it's not that they're bad cabinets but they're made to be inside a house so the whole movement have break a lot of uh, drawers for us and they already look a little wonky so i would totally recommend to buy some wood and put it together the total cost of the kitchen also includes two burner cooktop a sink that we got from ikea and clearly a big fridge that we buy from best buy the total cost for the kitchen was a thousand eight hundred and thirty seven that's including the ikea countertops as well so everything you see in the kitchen one of the things that we did in our bus which I guess everybody who converts a vehicle does, is plumb water. To be able to do this, we spent around $508 on CPVC plumbing materials. Is all of our connections, our fittings, that's also all of our uh, braided lines to go hot and cold water to each of our faucets, our shower, and anything really that we needed from there. It seems like quite a crazy amount of money, but having the ability to have hot and cold water on the go um, or any water on the go is just invaluable. Uh, we chose to do CPVC fittings over PEX because it was easily accessible to us. We we're familiar with it. We haven't had any issues with it so far. Another really large part of the build, which I figure I could just tell you about right here, is electrical. It's a major expense in almost every vehicle conversion that we've ever seen, as well as that we've you know seen in person or the people that we know that have built it. And so for us, we have a lot of 110 appliances throughout here. All of our wall plugs are 110, 
Uh, most of our major appliances and our television and stuff like that are 110 as well. And a large majority of the lights that we have around the bus for accent lighting are 110 also. We've lumped that together into what we consider an electrical expense. For us, we lucked out and we were able to pick up a secondhand solar setup off of a tiny home. We have a video about that you may have seen. Um, in all, that cost us $1,000. Everything else, including recessed lights, any of our vanity lights, our wall sconces and stuff like that, all of the electrical hardware, our brake panel as well as an upgraded pure sine wave inverter that we threw in the back broke down to an extra sixteen hundred and ninety six dollars so in total everything for our electrical equipment solar and then all of our fuses and amps and that good stuff came out to two thousand six hundred and ninety six bucks it was another very large expense and we we forked that expense up all at once so that's that's a tough one to chew um, when you think a sixteen thousand dollar total bus build and three thousand of it goes to electric but i can tell you this is an area that you don't want to skimp on as well primarily in the solar aspect of it while we have more than enough solar to run the appliances that we use through the day we did also need to buy a generator for rainy days and that's lumped into the cost of that as well. So our bus build would have been almost $650 cheaper had we not included the cost of that generator in it as well. So we have a 3,500 watt super quiet uh, inverter generator and that put us back 650 bucks, but it's been invaluable on the road. And because if you know anything about us, rain and gloomy weather follows us across the country. Um, we have plenty of videos where we highlight and document that. We would definitely advise adding one of those to a build even if you have a very large amount of solar or you know just go and, and deck yourself out with solar and lithium-ion uh, batteries to begin with. Another very large category for us in the form of cost for this bus build comes down to this bathroom, all of the fixtures for it, aesthetics if you will, our vanity and our holding tanks and this toilet. This is an area where you can go very minimal or an area that you can spend a large expense. For us, we chose to make this one of the larger costs in our entire build and we're very thankful that we did. Our holding tanks, we honestly think that we could do more uh, with our holding tanks. We have 100 gallons of fresh water, that set us back a couple hundred bucks. Um, we do have a gray water tank as well as a black water tank because we chose to go with a traditional RV style toilet down to a black holding tank. Shower is tiled with subway tiles as well as uh, marble speed tiles. And then we went with peerless fixtures. So we have this uniform theme going throughout the bus. The shower base, we got secondhand and that's part of how we kept the cost of our build down as much as we did is we weren't afraid to go to the scratch and dent section or find salvage places to pick up perfectly good equipment. So all in total for the cost of our bathroom, including our holding tanks, is about $1,850. And some of the figures that we're giving you aren't exact in discussion, but we do have the full breakdown that's gonna be available for you. So cement board, red guard uh, membranes like moisture barriers are all factored into the cost of this. So really anything from our curtains to our rods and everything in between it goes into that lump sum. A very cool part of our build is our wood stove. We went with a cubic mini wood stove from Canada. I would totally recommend it. At the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't think we need it right yet. The weather, we're gonna follow the weather. But since we got it, we have used it constantly. Of course, right now it's summertime, so it's hot, so we haven't used it. During the winter time, it takes around an hour to heat up the whole bus. Of course, if you have a smaller vehicle, it will be a little bit less than that. It does take a little bit longer to get to the back. It totally gets the whole bus hot. During the night, Chase will have to wake up around every four or five hours to add a little bit more wood to it. So it is time consuming, but it's totally worth it. For the cubic mini wood stove, we spend 609. That includes the pipe. It was a little harder to find it, but we find it in Menards in Wisconsin. I believe you totally can buy them from the Cubic Mini Wood Stove website, but I think it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. So we tried to save money in that aspect and we are 100% happy with it. Let me talk about paint. 
that was my that was my primary job in the build we painted everything from the roof walls outside cabinets closet everything when i say everything everything has paint done except for the floor we ended up spending six hundred and five dollars that includes henry tropical which is a paint for the roof that helps to keep the bus a little bit more cooler and comfortable inside Another thing that I would consider in a build that we didn't have for the first 3,500 miles, 33 to 3,500 miles of our big adventure is a tow kit. That way you can have a tow vehicle. Again, we picked up a large majority of this second hand. This is a Roadmaster Falcon 2 Pro setup for flat towing vehicles. We've also got a draw tight class 5 hitch receiver that we snagged from Amazon on a very big sale. It was like 130 bucks. This kit's normally close to $1,000. We picked it up secondhand uh, for $250. And then we had to buy some D-ring adapters to fit the bumper on our Jeep Wrangler that we flat tow with us. Having a tow vehicle and having a tow kit on our bus has absolutely made the way we travel much more enjoyable. It's allowed us to stay outside of major cities, but then also be able to get into the city to explore and feel very, very close to those areas. So we like to set up temporary routes and having a tow kit and tow vehicle really help us do that. This I would consider to be an absolute must if you're considering a bus build. Not necessarily if you're going for something like a van um, or a camper, because obviously you would have a vehicle that you're driving with you. So everything included in our tow kit broke down to about $502 all in, which is awesome because that's cheaper than this, uh, this tow receiver or tow adapter normally costs. One of the last major chunks of the cost of this build came in the form of store-bought storage or other things like our trim pieces, some of our um, air vent things as well, so we can push hot air from the heaters while we're driving, our propane fittings and attachments, all of that stuff for our water heater as well as our cooktop. And then we've also included things like our television mount, our umbrella for the rooftop deck, and our umbrella mount. So the total cost for all of our miscellaneous items broke down to about a thousand seven hundred and sixty seven bucks it was really just kind of the finishing pieces for Marose's makeup storage our media area and then all the things that make the bus really just look finished and put together as well as some creature comforts up top but that's why we lumped it all together into miscellaneous. And one of the last little categories of the bus build that we thought was important enough to uh, to really share because it, it was a cost, it wasn't a major cost, but it really helped transform the overall look of the space and keep other items out comes in the form of caulk and spray foam. So we primarily used painting caulk to fill in some of the areas that maybe we didn't quite cut perfectly, like every curve of our bus. Before we caulked these areas, you could see gaps and spaces, and we've got some pretty much around everything that, that we built wood related that meets the roof. And then every hole that we had to cut through either the roof or the floor of the bus, we spray foamed around that just to keep drafts away and animals out and stuff like that. Overall total between caulk and all of our foam, we spent $68 in total. From an aesthetic standpoint, I think it's totally worth it. And with that being said, the final cost of our school bus was $15,990 all in bus included generator materials solar paint floor everything so we just want to show you that while we believe it's beautiful we've we've gotten some feedback that you know, some of you guys also think that it's a really well put together bus. So from the very beginning, we just wanted to show everybody that you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can learn along the way mm -hmm. and you can do it cheap. You just have to be smart about it yeah. and you have to be willing to try to do things on your own. We've caught some slack by saying that you can do that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we hope you understand you can do this on your own time. It doesn't have to cost a lot and you can get out there and get after your dreams on your own accord. This is our experience building a school bus. You can do yourself a cheaper version or a more expensive version, but we thought, well, it's a good information if you have all laying down. With that being said, we actually put together an Excel form with everything that was spent on the bus. 
It's got um, SKU numbers, it has item numbers for almost everything, but you can break it down. You can see the total cost on a pie chart of what each category costs us. I even included Red Bulls in there because I did buy a couple of those um, along the journey. And those are factored into the, the $15,990 total cost as well. But that'll be below. I'm gonna give that to everybody who's curious for free. Um, you're welcome to check it out. You're welcome to go through the list and um, see some of the materials we used. If it's from a big chain store, Home Depot or Lowe's, typically we'll have the UPC or that model number there as well. Yes. So you can see we share quantities mm -hmm. as well as identifying things like the make and manufacturer or or the length, all of that. That's gonna be in the description about down below. Just click on it and you will get it for free. But that's all for today's videos, friend. We'll see you in the next one. We hope you enjoy it. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe and stick around. Hit the notification bell. We would love to see you each and every video. And we can't wait until we get back out on the road, which will be... In a couple of weeks. Yeah. Thumbs up for upcoming traveling videos. And we're going to try and coordinate some meet and greets somewhere along our journey as well. So uh, hopefully some of you guys will be able to make those. We'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye. Bye.